If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Shabbat Shalom to one and all, I'm Derek Witt, and this is tonight's edition of Insight on the Word. Coming up tonight, we're going to have a conversation with Larry Wessels, who is the director of Christian Answers, and he also hosts his own radio as well as television program from Austin, Texas. And we're going to make a careful examination of the New World Translation being used by Jehovah Witnesses worldwide. And, of course, we're going to open up the phone lines for you and yours to get into our conversation tonight. In a moment, we will have a conversation with Mr. Larry Wessels from Christian Answers. You are listening to Insight on the Word Radio. Once again, it certainly is a pleasure that Mary Aguilar and myself are coming to you from the ministry place here in Syracuse, New York, as we bring you Insight on the Word. Also, Mary Aguilar hosts her own program called Victim Speak Out, and we are looking, and certainly it's been pretty successful over the course of some time that she hosts her program, and I'm going to allow Mary to share a little bit about that, as well as welcome back. It's about time. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Derek. Yes, I do. I have a program every Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern Time, and it's called Victim Speak Out, and I have um, different guests every week and we discuss um, uh, abuse, child abuse, sexual abuse, any type of abuse, domestic violence and then um, I have also guests that come on that are experts in the field to help um, people that were victims um, give them a place where they can go and get help and I will after the program I will give out the number if that's okay with you, Derek? Sure. Yes. And, and so that, that, that's fine. And that is fine. But tonight, we're going to do something very unique. We're going back to our, our, our swing of things in some ways, uh, Mary Aguilar and myself. What we are doing, uh, we are going to deal with some issues that affect Jehovah Witnesses. And this is one of our programs that we do a lot of times. Um, of course, on Inside on the Word Radio, we makes it possible for everybody to have a dialogue with us here. And if you want to take part in this conversation, feel free to give us a call at 347-945-7601. You can also email me at DerekWitt at Yahoo.com. There's also one more way to do that, and that is in our web chat room, which is on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Insight on the Word. And certainly... We want to have you join us tonight. And tonight's no different because we have a very special guest. He is the host of his own program uh, that is a cable access show. Also, you probably have seen them on YouTube as well. He is calling from Austin, Texas, and and I hope that we have him available. He's the director of Christian Answers. He's also a Bible debater. We want to welcome Mr. Larry Wessels, all the way from Austin, Texas. First of all, thanks for coming on. And second, are you near, a little bit near the Crawford Ranch? Oh, well, it's great to be here, Derek, and to be with you and Mary on this show. And as far as Crawford, Texas, uh, to tell you the truth, I've never really, you know, Texas is a big state. <laughs> and I've never really <laughs> stopped taking the time to, Notice where exactly it is in the state of Texas. I'm here in Austin, right in the middle. But, uh, you know, I'm not really big on politics, and so I haven't paid too much attention to where, uh, where politicians live, you might say. Although when I was a kid growing up in Houston, Texas, I lived in the Spring Branch area of the uh, northwest part of the city of Houston, and across the railroad tracks was uh, Memorial City in Houston, a subdivision, and that's where George Bush's parents had a house oh. in Houston, so I, I do know I was, uh, I must have been living close to him for a while there when I was a 
back in high school, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> wow. Man, so I was going to say, if you do say something, if you do see the president, you know, former President Bush, uh, just tell him I said hi. <laughs> yeah, but in any event, but we we certainly are grateful to have you on part our, on our show. Um, one of the things that we're going to, and of course, tonight we're dealing with the New World Translation, and this is one of the uh, very controversial uh, translations of the scriptures that is only found at your local Kingdom Hall of Jehovah Witnesses. And so if you are a Jehovah Witness and you are joining us, we'd like for you to take out the New World Translation because it is, we like as I like to say, we like for you to join in our program and, of course, most importantly, uh, share your thoughts because, you know, this is your, the program where we get to have a dialogue with you. Um, but in the meantime, once again, 347-945-7601. My email address, DerekWitt at Yahoo.com. And, of course, the web chat room is open. So go ahead to blogtalkradio.com forward slash inside in the word. Um, one of the things I like to start off, Larry, is that with cults, we know that they would have normally or special uh, revelation that would come up. And so the big scenario that we have with a lot of cults, including Jehovah's Witnesses, is the fact that they use a limited number of scriptures out of complete context, um, resulting in erroneous interpretations as well as doctrines. And you yourself being part of this, um, you know, what is your take with your experience with Jehovah's Witnesses, especially when they do come to your door? Well, I've got a a long history of uh, dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, I became a born-again Christian back in 1981, and I remember I was all excited during that that honeymoon period with the Lord because you just got saved by the power of the Spirit. And I was gun-ho to talk to anyone and everyone I could find, <laughs> and I wanted to tell them about the Lord. That's a good way to lose all your worldly friends real fast. Right, of course, that's right. Peter <laughs> talked about that and. Uh, you know, in the, the little epistles of uh, Peter, but and that's exactly what happened to me. I pretty much lost my friends pretty fast, and so I'm talking to everyone I can about the Lord, and it wasn't long before, right away back there in 1981, I'm running into people that want to talk about the Lord, but it turns out it seemed like in most cases they were Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons. <laughs> and right. I'm sitting here going, yeah, I didn't know much about those guys, back then when you first get saved and I'm running into them all over the place and they're they're wanting to have Bible studies and all this stuff and so I started to have to know, know my Bible even better because they, they're bringing up all this stuff and one thing about being uh, saved by the Spirit is the Spirit itself testifies to your spirit that you are a child of God and when they would come up with all these doctrines these strange cultic doctrines I, I, at that time, back then, I didn't really know why they were wrong. I just sensed it in my spirit that this is wrong. And it didn't take long before I started to find out that their doctrines were such as uh, denying that Jesus Christ is God Almighty, that uh, he's the Archangel Michael, as Jehovah's Witnesses teach. He's uh, the first creation of Jehovah God. They're using this word Jehovah uh, instead of, you know, the the mm -hmm. kind of terminology I was seeing uh, in my King James Bible back then. Of course, I you use various translations, uh, but uh, generally when I'm dealing with cults and things, which I have been doing since 1981, uh, both the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, which is headquartered in Brooklyn, New York, which is the headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses, and interestingly enough, uh, the Latter-day Saints of uh, Mormonism out of Utah, Salt Lake City, both of these groups publish King James Bible. So, right, so, right. So I used the King James Bible when I was dealing with them simply because they themselves were publishing it. But what was right. interesting about it all is Jehovah's Witnesses have a severe problem with the King James Bible, even though they were publishing it all those years, is the fact that it doesn't teach what they teach. <laughs> And, right, there you go. So they came fact, out with their own translation. 
to right. get away from all the problems they were having with a King James Bible. But just to finish up so I can let you start talking some more. Uh, I go that's away from okay. no, I mean, having to deal no, with it. We problems. love you. No, that's okay, Larry, because we love your energy, and we like for people to just come on with that, you know. <laughs> so that's okay. Uh, I'm kind but, of passionate. I'm very passionate when it comes about come, comes to, to the Lord and His Word and what the Bible teaches. That's all. Yeah. But here's the, the, the situation that we have, is that a lot of times many Jehovah Witnesses are not aware of the nature of their own Bible, um, and especially with the translation that they use of the New World Translation. And we're going to get into a lot into this. First of all, as I, I remember if we, um, if we would sit down and to look at this together, it, it does look kind of peculiar in a sense that not only the wording is kind of strange, but also within its content. And probably we, we could go into a background on this. Um, I know it, as a former Joe Witness myself, um, what we do know is that it, the translation committee was formed in 1950 to create a new translation that would basically be um, somewhat uh, very much that would stand out. You know, so, but other than that, the rest, a lot of people are not aware of. So I give you the benefit of the opportunity to go ahead and share that with us. Well, of course, they, they came out in 1950. In fact, uh, 1950 is when their New World Translation first made its appearance, but it wasn't in its complete form until about 10 years later. They were coming out with sections that they were translating, and uh, it took them approximately about 10 years to finally get it to where... They were more satisfied with it. But the translation committee actually came off the Jehovah's uh, governing body on earth uh, that they have there at the Watchtower Society in New York and Brooklyn. And that Watchtower Bible Translation Committee was composed of the president of the Jehovah's Witnesses back then, Frederick W. Franz, Milton Henschel, Albert Schroeder, N.H. Knorr, and G.D. Genghis. Those, those. Uh, in fact, Noah was also a president of the Watchtower Society before Frederick Franz. Uh, mm -hmm. And, of course, be the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses goes back to Charles Taze Russell, who was born in 1852 and started this whole thing himself by claiming to be the faithful and wise servant of Matthew chapter 24, verse 45. And then, of course, later after he died on Halloween night, in 1916, Judge Rutherford came along, and then he changed that teaching as he did many of the teachings of the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Rutherford. He changed the, 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 the founder's teachings of, uh, to uh, that the faithful and wise servant of Matthew 25, uh, 45 was actually, I mean, I'm sorry, 24, 45, was uh, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society organization itself, rather than being Russell, the founder of it. And then, anyway, so they, they have this problem because they're, they've been using the King James. It doesn't work for them on the many, many issues because the essential Bible doctrines are denied by Jehovah's Witnesses. In fact, I've told many people over the years, just study Jehovah's Witnesses if you want to know a cult that denies almost every essential doctrine of the Bible. Just study them, then you'll be ready to deal with Mormons, Unitarians, Muslims, uh, uh, Hindus, any kind of group that's out there, Unification Church, uh, New Age cults. You'll be able to deal with all of them. If you study Jehovah's Witnesses and learn how to repeat their arguments, you'll be good to go against all the cults <laughs> because the Jehovah's Witnesses right. <laughs> are so wrong on almost everything. And so if you know how to refute them, you're good to go against all the other cults. Well, anyway, right. they need some kind of new Bible translation that's going to help them uh, promote their doctrine that the normal Bibles would not do. And so these, these five men I just now mentioned a minute ago on the translation committee, Franz, Henschel, Schroeder, Knorr, and Genghis, came up with this 
this translation, the New World Translation. And, of course, what's interesting about these five gentlemen is that none of them are Greek or Hebrew scholars. None of them. <laughs> they're, they're just Jehovah's Witnesses. That's what they are, but they're not Greek or Hebrew scholars. That's one reason they didn't want to tell anybody who translated their Bible. Because mm-hmm. if anyone knew, they would all say, wait a minute, you know, you don't have any credentials to be right. translating the Word of God. And, of course, they knew that. <laughs> That's why they tried to keep it anonymous. The only reason we found out who it was, finally, is that uh, the brother of the president of the, of the Watchtower Society, uh, Frederick Franz, his brother Raymond Franz, came, you know, d- departed away from the Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, he became disillusioned with them and broke away. In fact, that kind of reminds me, you know, right now there's more ex-Jehovah's Witnesses in the world than there are actual Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> right. He's like, more people gone into it and come out of it than are actually in it at the moment. But anyway, here's the right. president's brother getting out of it, and he writes a book called Christ, Crisis of Conscience. And you can, this right. book is available through Amazon.com and things like that. You can get a used copies, whatever. But anyway, he revealed who the translation committee was after the Watchtower themselves refused to tell everybody who they were because they knew, they knew that none of them were Greek scholars. <laughs> how do you how right. do you translate a Greek translation when you don't know what the Greek says? <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. That's, but, that's what they came out with so they could intentionally, and I think this is easy to prove. In fact, we even did a television show on this for Austin Public Access, and it's currently on Yahoo Video, Google Video, uh, on the Internet. It's called Examining the New World Translation. We actually brought in a Ph.D. in, in the biblical languages, uh, Old Testament Hebrew and New Testament Greek, and uh, reviewed their translation along with their interlinear translation, which came out in 1969 called the Kingdom Interlinear Translation, of the Greek scriptures as an accompaniment to their New World translation of the Christian Greek scriptures as they call their their translation. And, uh, of course, we show in that television show that uh, they are not saying to what they claim this translation is supposed to be about. In fact, right away in the front of their, their, uh, their uh, New World translation on the Ford, on page five, and I'm, I'm actually reading here from a 1950 edition of the Watchtower uh, New World Translation. I, I have numerous publications. In fact, if you could see me right now, I'm in my office in, in the preparation for this radio show. I laid out all my Jehovah's Witness books all over the floor and on my desk and <laughs> on, on cabinets around so I could have an easy reference for whatever, but... I've got Jehovah's Witness reference material that goes back into the 1800s. Wow. The, so this is one of my uh, more modern uh, Jehovah's Witness works here, the original 1950 New World Translation, which I'm holding my hand right now. And, of course, it says right in the foreword, the original writings of the Greek, of the Christian Greek scriptures, commonly called the New Testament, were inspired. No translation of these sacred writings into another language except by the original writers is inspired. And then it goes on to uh, say as you, you get into their Ford, it says here on page uh, 9, they say, We offer no paraphrase of the scriptures. Our endeavor all through has been to give as literal a translation as possible where the modern English idiom allows and where a literal rendition does not for any uh, clumsiness hide the thought. That way we can best meet the desire of those who are scrupulous for getting as nearly as possible word for word the exact statement of the original. And then it goes down a little bit on the same page. To each major word we have assigned one meaning. And as they, they go on in here, and it's also in their, in their Kingdom Interlinear Translation, they make all these claims uh, that uh, the, the endeavor of the New World 
Bible Translation Committee has been to avoid the snare of re religious traditionalism. Now, that's a direct quote from page 8 of their Kingdom Interlinear Translation, and it also says on page 9, uh, there is no benefit in self-deception. And then it goes on to say, here on page 10, the translation of the scriptures into a modern language should be rendered in the same style and the speech forms current among the people. We offer no paraphrase of the scriptures. Our endeavor all throughout has been to give as little a translation as possible where the modern English idiom allows and where a literal rendition does not for any comedy. And it's the same thing. They put the same thing as they have in their other book. And they say they assign each major word. We have assigned one meaning and have held to that meaning as far as the context uh, permitted. This we know has imposed a restriction upon our diction. And then they give excuses why their grammar doesn't sound so good uh, throughout the, uh, the, uh, their translation. And then another key point right. before we go on, page 11, they say, uh, in these, uh, the distinctive name of God was rendered by the Greek word uh, kurios, uh, with or without the definite article, and theos. And then they go on to explain mm -hmm. why they uh, translate in their particular translation God's name as Jehovah, which is actually just a, a, a transliteration from the Middle Ages. It wasn't even known right. at the time of the uh, original scriptures being written. So they're actually taking a transliteration of the original Greek, uh, uh, the, the Hebrew uh, tetragrammaton, YHWH, which had no vowels in it because the, the Jews were fearful in the Ten Commandments that says, Thou shalt not use the name of, of God in vain, they were afraid to do that. So they took the vows out so nobody could say his name <laughs> in fear of right. a, one of those commandments. But here in the middle centuries, uh, a transliteration was made and Jehovah as a result. So the name they use in their translation isn't even going back to the start of when the scriptures were written. <laughs> uh, so that right way... <laughs> Their, their, their concept is, uh, you might say, based on what I just read a while ago, on how they're saying that they're being literal word for word, no paraphrases, no religious traditionalism, blah, blah, blah. You know, what they're actually doing is exactly the opposite of what they're telling the readers in, in these right. books. They are, they are, and we will find that out as we go through this show. And as we proved in the television show that's already posted on Yahoo Video or Google Video, all I have to do is put my name, Larry Wessels. You know, about 300 videos will come up, and you just have to scroll through the pages <laughs> until you happen to find out. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I understand that. <laughs> my guest happens. My guest is Mr. Larry Wessels. He is also he's a born again believer. Uh, he's the director of Christian Answers. He hosts a Austin Cable Access program with that name as well as he has YouTube and Yahoo presentations of his program and he's joining us here on Inside on the Word Radio. Another thing that many people are not aware of is the or is the um, spirit to the, the, the demonic origin of the New World Translation, particularly the use of one, Johannes Grieber, as well as Westcott and Hort. Tell us a little bit more in the background of Mr. Grieber, as well as these two, who are also responsible for the uh, creation of the Kingdom Interlinear Translation of the Christian Greek Scriptures the Watchstar Society have used. Okay, in fact, it's interesting you mentioned that. I didn't know if we were going to get to that point. There's so much you can say on so many facets of this New World Translation, besides just going into an actual study of how they pervert the Word of God, uh, showing that their opening statements are untrue. But uh, it just so happens that as you were bringing up that next question, uh, one of the uh, two of the books actually I had strewn about me here for reference for this radio show were two books by Johannes Grieber. In fact, I'm holding them both in my hands right now as uh, we're talking on the radio. Uh, he came out with a book called Communication with the Spirit World of God, Its Laws and Purpose, Personal Experiences of a Catholic Priest, 
by Johannes Grieber. Now, you see, in fact, I'm looking at a picture of him right now as I've kind of opened the book here a little bit. He, his wife was a spiritistic medium. Of course, we know from any knowledge of the Old Testament or New Testament that uh, spiritistic mediumship was condemned by the Word of God, particularly Deuteronomy chapter 18. Uh, I'm thinking Isaiah chapter 48, if my memory, or 47, if my memory serves me correct there. Uh, Deuteronomy 18 for sure. And then throughout the scriptures, you have a condemnation of mediumship because it is, as you said, Derek, connected to the demonic. In fact, uh, it reminds me of a, a, a show we just put on uh, the Internet not long ago entitled The Ouija Board. Uh, we get into an analysis of the Ouija Board, its historical background and so forth, but this, this ties into that same occultic art of, uh, of, of the many occultic arts, of uh, communication with spirits, spiritism. Well, anyway, Johannes Grieber's wife was a spiritistic medium in contact with these spirits, and uh, she inspired him to come up with a, another book, which I'm now looking at. Uh, of course, the one book, Communication with the Spirit World of God, he gets into all the reasons why you do it, why it's right, and, you know, all that stuff, but uh, his reasoning. But... Based on that, of course, he's totally wrong. He's depending on people not to know what the Bible says. But uh, he came out as a result of his wife being in contact with these spirits, which God condemns in the Scripture, in the Bible, uh, with a translation of the New Testament. And uh, looking at this particular book, uh, he just simply calls his book the New Testament. And it's a, a, a book that is the whole New Testament translated by the spirits that his wife is in communication with. And uh, when you uh, start looking at this book and seeing how he's translated the Bible, uh, you can see why the Jehovah's Witnesses reference this particular translation uh, in, their, in their own writings and magazines, Watchtower magazines, Awake magazines, and so forth. Right now I'm kind of Scrambling here. To, oh, here we go. I found it. I'm trying to find John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. As anyone knows mm -hmm. from all the different good, trans, uh, uh, good translations of the Bible by Greek and Hebrew scholars over the, uh, over, over the time, uh, King James Bible, New American Standard, the New International Version. You've got all these different translations, uh, RSV, ESV. And, you know, just all these translations, they all say the same thing. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Son. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word was God. Talking about Jesus being God. Well, anyway, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that. And for backup, in their translation, which in their New World translation of Jehovah's Witnesses, they had to change that verse. That verse was just too obvious. <laughs> they right. had to do something about it. So what they're going to do is change it to exactly the same way Johannes Grieber changed it through spiritistic medium communication through his wife. And, and I'm looking, right, I'm holding the uh, Grieber's Bible translation in my hand right now. I'm looking at John 1.1 1, 1 out of his translation this will be page 164 in his book, and here's how he translates it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. And it's, a, it's right. an amazing thing when you, uh, you take that translation from Grieber and uh, see how the spirits that his wife was in communication with translated it. And now I'm trying to... I'm trying to flip over here to John 1.1 1, 1, here, I found it, in the original Jehovah's Witness, the uh, New World Translation of the Christian Greek Scriptures. I'm on page, uh, what is this here? My eyes are getting bad. I'm getting old. 282, <laughs> and here's what it says in their translation. Originally, the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Mm -hmm. exactly the same as that transmitted by a spiritistic medium to Johannes Grieber 
in his translation. And this is why uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses have reference to him. Of course, they're counting on the fact that you really don't know who this guy is. And you haven't right. picked up his book or looked to see how he got his translation. This guy was not a Greek scholar. He didn't, he didn't know a thing about the, the, the original languages. All he knew is what the, the spirits told him through his wife. Mm-hmm. And yet the Jehovah's Witnesses in their so-called inspired, inspired, inspired communication from God through their faithful and uh, discreet slave class organization there in Brooklyn, New York, they're quoting this man as a source of authority for their translation <laughs> of this, right. this John 1.1. It, which, mm-hmm. which, once again, shows you how ridiculous it is. And this also goes back to the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses, Charles Taze Russell, who right. he had claimed to be the uh, original faithful and wise servant out of Matthew chapter 24, verse 45. But he had uh, run into a man named uh, Benjamin Wilson, who was a Christadelphian, who this group, he was also a, a, a newspaper man, uh, he had run into him on a train ride uh, there some, somewhere in Pennsylvania where uh, Russell was at the time before he moved to Brooklyn. And part of the reason uh, Russell, the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, left Pennsylvania where he started and started the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Of course, it was known as Zion's Watchtower back then. And then the name yes. evolved over time. But back then, he moved out of Pennsylvania to Brooklyn partly because he got a divorce from his wife and he didn't want to pay any child support or alimony, so he moved <laughs> so he could cross state lines, so he could get away from uh, having to pay the alimony to his ex-wife. Uh, but but anyway, that's just an aside. Yeah, he's on this railroad right, I... that's ride, and he he talks to this Benjamin Wilson, who's a Christadelphian, who who denies you know that Jesus is God, denies the Trinity, denies you know a lot of the essential Bible doctrines we find throughout. And he had come up with this uh, publication called uh, The Emphatic Diagloss, which in mm-hmm. their translation of the New Testament, they had done the exact same thing as Grieber, and of course here the Jehovah's Witnesses have done with John 1.1. 1, 1. He changed it to a God. So what you'll find also in Jehovah, and, and remember, this guy was not a Greek scholar either. He was a Christadelphian right. cultist uh, working for a newspaper, and he came out with this emphatic diaglot, which, uh, if my memory serves me correct, uh, the uh, Russell bought the uh, copyright on, so he could use that as his argument for saying Jesus was not God. So the Watchtower has these two great references for their reasoning for translating John 1-1 one, one the way they do. A spiritistic medium and a newspaper man. <laughs> And, and, of course, we're going to know about their translation committee. <laughs> right. My guest is Larry Wessels, the director of Christian Answers, and he's joining us from Austin, Texas. Um, another thing that we wanted to bring up a lot about from the New World Translation is the uh, big issue of what the Watchtower statements, ha- what the Watchtower Society have said in regards to the Bible itself. And I'm going to quote some of them, and I'd like for you to share your thoughts on, you know, sh- share your thoughts overall from what is being said here. Starting in 1994, the Watchtower October 1st um, issue, on page 8, under the title, Channel to Understand the Bible, the subtitle, quote, all who want to understand the Bible should appreciate that the greatly diversified wisdom of God can only become known only through Jehovah's channel of communication to faithful and discreet slave. Uh, another one, August the 15th, 1981, Watchtower, page 29, quote, They say it is sufficient to read the Bible exclusively, either alone or in small groups at home, but strangely, though, through such Bible reading, they have reverted right back to the apostate doctrine that commentaries by Christian clergy we're teaching over 100 years ago. And let's see, February 15th, 1981, Watchtower, page 19, quote, We all need help to understand the Bible, and we cannot find the scriptural guidance we need outside the faithful and discreet slave class. Now, we know that 
Faith on Discreet Slave, uh, Jehovah's Channel Communication, are nothing more than some names given to the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, what is your thought on what they are basically saying in print? Well, they've used this, this passage out of Matthew 24, 45 through 47 about the faithful and discreet slave as a way of actually elevating themselves even higher than the Bible. In other words, uh, one of the traits of Jehovah's Witnesses and with most people following false prophets, and cults is they've got an authority of figure that's been established in their mind as that's the one that has got the authority to be able to translate the Bible correctly to give them the proper meet and due season as Jehovah's Witnesses like to say uh, you can't just I'm, one time I had a, a whole room full of Mormon missionaries in my house including some of their, their temple uh, elders and uh, I asked them I said, hey, if I was on a desert island and all I had was a Bible, uh, could I make it to heaven? And they, they, they said, uh, no, it doesn't look too good. And I said, well, what if I had a, a Book of Mormon and a Bible? Could I make it to heaven? And they said, no, no, you need, you need more than that. And I said, well, uh, what if I had all your books and the, and the Bible? Uh, well, you still need a... You still need a, uh, a, a prophet living on the earth today to give you new revelation. You see, you mean to say, I, 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 even with all this stuff, I still can't, I can't make it? <laughs> and I got this right. okay, by the way. <laughs> uh, well, oh, see, what man. it really comes down to is you need a leader that can give you that information. And that's what the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society has done. They're telling their followers that they are the ones that are authorized. Uh, they're the only ones on the face of the earth that can give you the proper interpretation of what the Bible says. So you can't just read a Bible. You need a Watchtower magazine or an Awake magazine or the you know, Reasoning from the Scriptures books or You Can Live Forever in Paradise on Earth book or all their other books and literature that they have. You've got to have that in order to be able to understand. And so they right. elevate themselves above the Word of God. You can't just have the Bible and just read that, oh no, you got to have their interpretation of what the Bible right. says. And oh, what's interesting here, and I like to harp on this with uh, actual Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, they, they of course, uh, make a big, big deal, it goes back to the quotes you were giving, but when you look at, like, the December 1st, 1916 Watchtower, it says that the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, Charles Taze Russell, is the faithful and true witness, as mentioned in Matthew 24. Uh, it says, Pastor Russell adhered closely to the teachings of Scripture, and they did all, all this stuff, and how uh, he was right about 1874 when Christ came back. Of course, that ties into their doctrines of the invisible coming of Christ, how he visibly returned in 1874, and then that ties into their 1914 date, and then all their other false prophecies about the return of the Lord, which would be a whole television or a whole radio show in itself, but of course they have now changed it because the next after Russell died in 1916 on Halloween night, and Judge Rutherford became the next president of the, of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. He changed it to where his organization was the faithful and wise servant, and that faithful Jehovah's Witnesses should follow their teachings and divine guidance. And as you get into uh, Rutherford's teachings, such as he came out with a book called Angels, and then here he basically says that even the demons can be redeemed and still make it to heaven if they repent and do the right things. And as he's teaching in this book Angels, and I just happen to have a copy of it right in my hand okay. as I'm talking to you right now, he, he goes on to say that Jehovah lives on a planet in the, yes. the Pleiote star system called Alclone. And angels have to travel about a distance of 10 days to be able to get here to Earth because Jehovah doesn't know everything. And so they have to send <laughs> communications from Jehovah from this planet. Now remember, this is the second president of the Watchtower Society who formulated the very thing you asked me about just now, about the faithful yeah. and wise servants. The, the discreet slave, uh, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. They, 
He is the one that instituted this idea that you have to look to these guys in Brooklyn, New York, as your source of authority for even having a chance to understand what the Bible says. And it's basically coming from the second president who's saying that Jehovah is a God who lives on some planet in the Pleiades star system, and he needs angels to travel ten days to get here. <laughs> and then take right. the information back so he can find out what's going on over here. <laughs> so, and, and, and I'm holding the book and all these other references. If I had the time, you ought to see my office right now. I've got all these books going back over 100 years, back to Russell, and then I've got all of Rutherford stuff, and then we come on up to the current day, you know, the original. But all anyone has to do usually to expose false prophets is check their history, do the, do the right. homework, do the research. But what happens is most people don't do that. They just buy into a bill of goods because really Jehovah's Witness is knocking at your front door or like a, a couple of shoe salesmen or a clothes salesman. Right. You know, there's this group uh, in, uh, in fact, our video on the Internet right now on Clipser has over 300,000 hits. It's on the Nation of Islam and Louis Farrakhan. That religion was started in 1930 in Chicago by a guy going door to door named Wallace Fard. He was just selling clothes. And then one day, just it hit him. Of course, he got there from San Quentin Prison. He was a drug trafficker, trafficker just got out of prison. Went over there, started selling clothes door to door. Then it hit him one day, hey, I'll just start telling people I'm the Lord of the Universe. So he started telling all these people he was the Lord of the Universe. Next thing you know, he's got 8,000 followers. He started the Nation of wow. Islam, and it was taken over by uh, Elijah Muhammad, who then was followed by Louis Farrakhan, who's a, who's a friend of the President of the United States right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think that's one reason they got 300,000 hits on that video. <laughs> My guest is Larry Wessels. Uh, we'd like for you to join in in our conversation. Uh, our web chat room is open. We want to welcome Beauty, Black Beauty 31, Lover of Truth, as well as W. White Dove in joining us in our conversation. And also, if you want to take part in this too, feel free to give me a call at 347-945-7601. And on top of that, of course, my email address is DerekWin at Yahoo.com. We already touched on a number of subjects on the New World Translation, but we're going to get into more of this. He already started off with some Bible text. We will, and once again, we're going to continue on this conversation in just a moment. But we'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for, uh, you know, for a lot of you who have uh, been very much active in our conversations on our web chat rooms as well. And, and matter of fact, we have received a number of emails we're going to get to in the coming weeks. So next week, we will read your emails. I, never, I haven't done it in a while, but it's about that time. We're also going to open up the phone lines as well. Derek Whip will not say anything. I'm just going to allow the conversation to go ahead and allow others to share their thoughts. And, of course, Mary, I'd like to also make mention on the 21st and 28th of May, Mary Aguilar will be hosting Inside on the Word. More on our, with our conversation with Mr. Larry Wessels, the director of, of the Christian Answers here in Austin, Texas. I, I, I love his passion. There's one thing I, I, I have to admit. This man is passionate, and, and I wish that a lot of Christians uh, around us should feel the exact same way, especially when it comes to winning souls for Yeshua or in, in Jesus Christ. And I, you know, and like I said, this is one thing that uh, is so necessary, and I'm glad that this is being expressed so nicely by Larry Wessels. Uh, you're, and of course, this is the biggest of them all because a lot of things is challenge is a is a challenge to deal with cults. Um, you have to do mostly it's the prayer. You know, you have to be in prayer because as um, as he will tell you, and I will tell you. That Jehovah's Witnesses, the origin of this religion is demonic in its nature. If it's not Johannes Grieber being the influence of the Bible, right? You know, the so-called Bible translation within the Watchtower Society. Um, there's also the other. There's some other aspects. I mean, the shoddy job that they put together, including 
misquoting deliberately from scholars such as J.R. Manti, uh, Dr. Bruce Mesker, and a few others. And I'm going to allow Larry to talk about those individuals. And let's listen to what they have to say into this. And I, I know for in your case, you had a, a panel that was on your program a while about um, I was I'm dating back and correct me if I'm wrong close to 24 25 years ago on this subject I think and um, was, uh, yeah we did that show on the New World Translation probably I would say 19 I want to say 1988 so probably 22 years ago now so I was going to I, I was in college at that time, so let's don't, <laughs> I don't want to go far, and I don't want my age to be revealed. There's just no way. <laughs> you had to ask about the Greek scholars on, particularly, I've got some, I just happen to have some quotes here. As you were talking, I was digging around at all the stuff I've got laying around here, and uh, I, I've already, and this kind of segues fairly nicely off our discussion just a while ago on John 1.1, 1, 1. and just yes. just that one verse of Scripture, which is so critical of everything, because, you know, here's John 1.1, 1, 1, by almost every translation in the world, but by reputable Greek scholars translating, the word was God, saying Jesus is God, and then here you got the Jehovah's Witness translation saying the word was a God, and then they quote Graeber and uh, the emphatic dialogue by Wilson is some of their authority for doing so. But now, what are the only scholars? You just mentioned some of the scholars. I just happen to have a, a sheet here that mentions a lot of the scholars. Uh, just on this one verse, John 1.1. 1, 1. And I'll start with Dr. Julius R. Manti, who was actually quoted by the Watchtower Society. Actually, I should say misquoted by the Watchtower <laughs> Bible Society. In fact, it reminds me one time on this uh, interlinear translation of the Greek scriptures, which is a companion to their New World Translation. I went down, we have uh, several seminaries here in town, and I went down to the Presbyterian Seminary to their library, their theological library, although I do like to go yeah. down to the University of Texas library, and I have researched all their quotes of these different uh, so-called Greek scholars uh, in, their, in their Bible translation, New World Translation, and their interlinear. Well, they're they're very apt to quote people like Manti here. They quote Manti in their translations, uh, in the footnotes, I should say, not in the actual uh, verbiage, of course, but, but they, they're trying to justify why they're translating certain passages the way they do, and they, they end up, in their footnotes, justifying it by quoting different scholars. And Manti is one that they've quoted several times. Of course, he put out a tape, and I just happen to have the tape in my tape library, where... Uh, he was threatening a lawsuit against them for taking his words out of context. In other words, they take scholars, and I verified this myself by going down to those libraries and looking yeah. up their references. In their, you, you know I've got to be a fanatic. If I'll take the time to go down to a theological library and look up all the Greek scholars they're quoting and see if they quoted them accurately, which they did not. <laughs> they yeah. quote half a sentence. Or I'll take a sentence out of context with a, where it's found in a paragraph, and that's exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses are doing whenever they quote Greek scholars. They are misquoting them, but they make it look like they're quoting them accurately, and, and someone that doesn't go and do what I did, which is go look up the actual references to see if they were quoted in context, you find out that they yeah. deliberately misquote these guys. Now, with that said, let me give you a quote from Manti himself. He was one of the ones that the Watchtower actually quoted in their writings and publications, and the, he's quoted in these uh, Jehovah's Witness uh, translations. Dr. Julius Armanti says, calls the Watchtower translation of John 1.1, 1, 1, quote, a grossly misleading translation. It is neither scholarly nor reasonable to translate John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was a God. But of all the scholars in the world, so far as we know, none have translated this verse as Jehovah's Witnesses have done. And then you have Bruce M. Metzger, uh, about 10 years ago I was talking to him on the phone, but anyway, uh, professor right. of New Testament <laughs> uh, language and literature at Princeton Theological Seminary said, far more pernicious in the same verse 
is the rendering, and the word was a God, with the following footnotes, quote, a God, in contrast with the God, end quote. It must be stated, quite frankly, that if the Jehovah's Witnesses take this translation seriously, they are polytheists. In view of the additional light which is available during this age of grace, such a representation is even more reprehensible than were the heathenish polyistic errors into which ancient Israel was so prone to fall. As a matter of solid fact, however, such a rendering is a frightful mistranslation. And then you go on to Dr. J.J. Griesbeck, Dr. Eugene Nida, head of the Translation Department of the American Bible Society, translators of the Good News Bible. Uh, he says, with regard to John 1.1, 1, 1, there is, of course, a complication simply because the New World Translation was apparently done by persons who did not take seriously the syntax of the Greek, end quote. And then he goes on to quote Dr. William Barclay of the University of Glasgow, Scotland, uh, uh, Ernest Caldwell, F.F. F. Bruce, uh, Kaufman, Prof. Dr. Kaufman of Portland, Oregon, Charles Finn. I've got a whole giant list here of Greek scholars, or actual scholars, uh, authorities in this field, and they all blast the New World Translation as a, a dishonest and non-scholarly work. So does that answer that question? But wait a minute, but let's look. Let's backtrack here because here, this Bible that that I have used as a for, as a Jehovah Witness is not only has a, 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 a demonic origin with Johannes Grieber, but also shoddy work in terms of understanding the Greek as well as Hebrew text by one uh, Franz, who happens to be the one that. Jehovah Witnesses look up to back then as the man that um, as the oracle of the Watchtower Society and yet let me get and, and then to sit down and misquote these Bible translators something just doesn't sit well on this well you're just talking about scholastic dishonesty is basically what we're, we're dealing with here from beginning to end you've just got some guys who, and, and let's face it, most religious religions, false religions and cults, are founded by somebody and then uh, continue to go on through the decades and centuries. Uh, once, once it's established, it's a good money-making setup. Uh, the, the people that are in it, particularly at the top, they don't want to lose a good thing when they have it. Uh, most of your false religions are started by men who are simply in, interested in three things, money, sex and power <laughs> you know, that's what you get uh, from most of these religions that have been started by a lot of these guys that, that created you know you take Muhammad for instance of Islam money, yes. sex and power were great incentives for him to start that religion and as his army conquered one place after another you know as you read the Islamic Hadith you know he's telling you how to divide up the booty how you can take married women away from their husbands and give them to some of your soldiers as war booty and all this. It comes down to that. That's one reason he has so many wives. And then money, sex, and power. And when you've got, and after the leader dies or whatever, and other guys take over, well, you know, they inherit all this stuff. They get, they get all these benefits from, right. a, from the false religion. And do you think they want it to go away? No, they're going to, they want to enjoy it. So they keep it going. They keep it going so they can enjoy the same three benefits that I just outlined. <laughs> right. So, what we have here is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, the leaders, the head, the head guys up there in Brooklyn, New York, they don't want this to go away, so they want to keep it going, whether it's true or not. <laughs> they want to keep right. it going. It's a money-making business. It gives them honor and prestige. It gives them all the temporary benefits of this world. Of course, you know, the Bible says that the wicked have their reward now. Not in the next life, That's but they right. get it now in this life. So... These guys that are in these false religions, their interest is to keep it going whether it's true or, true or not. And this is exactly why these guys will go to such levels of dishonesty to keep their religion uh, with as many followers as they can, they can hold to it and will simply not tell people the truth about the situation. It's, it's sort of like right. uh, 
you were talking about friends when you were a Jehovah's Witness, and uh, they were making a big deal like he was a a, a road scholar and had all this understanding of Greek and things of that nature. But I'm looking right now at a letter from the Road Scholarship Trust, dated uh, four, January 14, 1981, and uh, their letters here to uh, Bill Sintnar, who was an ex-Jehovah's Witness, who wrote to them about uh, the Jehovah's Witness president's alleged uh, being a Rhodes Scholar, you know, because they make all these claims for him being all this stuff. And anyway, their letter says, Thank you for your letter of December 27th. I have checked our records and do not find that Frederick W. William Franz was elected to the Rhodes Scholarship. Our records, I uh, should note, for only to scholars elected from the, the United States, unless Mr. Franz has completed successfully or has uh, competed successfully as a candidate for the scholarship in another country, you may conclude that his claim to have been a Rhodes Scholar is incorrect, signed the Rhodes Scholarship Trust. And it, all it really takes when you're exposing false prophets, no matter what religion they're in, is research, yes. research and study. And, of course, the biggest thing to expose them of all, without having to do, go to the links like someone like I have, uh, is mm-hmm. just know the Word of God. <laughs> That's if you all. know the that's Bible, the then yes, that's, that's going to exactly be your best, your best bet against false prophets, because the Bible stands. It's a rock. It'll it'll stand against all the falsehoods that the devil and his agents can throw against it. And so right. if you're reading this uh, New World Translation, the Kingdom Interlinear of the Greek Scriptures, they're making all these claims. They're, they're quoting... So you know these scholars in their footnotes and things. As I already said, that their quotes are all out of context. In other words, this they're telling you their their head is a road scholar, their Greek scholar, but they're just deliberately lying to their followers so they can keep them in the group. That's another reason they yes. they tell the people not to even look at the internet. The internet's a dangerous place now for Jehovah's Witnesses because they can be exposed to the truth. And so, what do these guys do up there in Brooklyn? They say, don't. Don't don't look at the internet. <laughs> right. In know? fact, we in fact we just received a, 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 a con, uh, like a uh, received an email from a, a Jehovah Witness who told that they were at a circuit assembly in California this you know a while about a couple of months ago, and the speaker have warned the brothers and so called you know the so called brothers and sisters that they should remove their Facebook accounts. Uh, you know, Facebook accounts and so forth, because there's too many people who have formed all these Christian, you know, witnesses groups, and rather, well, they call them apostates and so forth. And, right, right, right. Well, the, well let's, the if they don't want their ahead. followers to be exposed to the truth. <laughs> they, yes. They just yeah. want, they, you know, it's, they they just want people to stay and listen to them only because they've exalted themselves. And they've convinced people that they are the faithful and wise servants uh, of uh, Matthew 25, uh, Matthew 24, verse 40, 45, and that they are the only ones that can be trusted. And you know what's yes. interesting, Derek, is that I've led, a, uh, the, by God's grace, I've led quite a few people out of Jehovah's Witnesses over the years. And mm-hmm. when I'm dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses, and I've gone to a lot of their, their watchtower uh, conventions here in town and also their statewide conventions at the Astrodome in Houston and things of that nature. That's how fanatical I am. See, I'll actually travel where there's thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses all in one place just so I can witness yeah. <laughs> But But uh, when I found that I, if you want to get a Jehovah's Witness out of the Jehovah's Witnesses, you don't spend time arguing the Bible with them. Because right. they are convinced that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, and headquartered in Brooklyn, New York, is the only one that has the truth. And so they trust that organization. So when you, as a Bible believer, come and try to argue the Bible with them, they won't listen to you because they're already convinced by the false prophet that's blinding their eyes that you're an apostate, that you're, you're deceived by the devil. How do you mm-hmm. how do you reach a Jehovah's Witness to where he can, can start listening to you when you try to share the Bible? You don't start out with arguing the Bible with him because he's already convinced that you're wrong and only the Watchtower is right. What you have to do is shake his confidence in the false prophet. <laughs> right. And and so when I'm when I'm dealing with them and I tell this to a lot of Christians that won't go 
through the, uh, the kind of extensive research that I've done and, or have this big old library like I have here uh, with me. But uh, a simple way to do it is I, I tell them, that don't argue the Bible with them because they're already convinced you're wrong. Uh, but shake their confidence, and, uh, and that may shake them down the line. And what I do is I just say, just ask them about the Roman Catholic Church. So that's a favorite target of Jehovah's Witness. They love to attack the Roman Catholic Church, so let them go on for a few minutes about how bad that is. And you say, well, well, surely the Baptists are okay. And then they'll blast the Baptists. And, and then you say, well, uh, what about the Muslims? Aren't they okay? And then, of course, they'll blast the Muslims. And you can throw out a few other religions if you want, and they'll blast all of them. And, uh, and in the end, you just go, well, what about a religion that's just started by a guy who thinks that uh, the, the pyramids in Egypt uh, predict the end of the world and our, our, our prophecy map to God? What about a guy like that? Now, and he just starts his own religion. Would he be okay? Oh, no, the pyramids in Egypt, that's all pagan and polytheism. And then they'll sit there and blast that and blast him. And then you go, well, uh, what about if the guy starts a religion like this, but then someone comes along after him and they start changing his beliefs up. They still hold to a lot of them, but then they change a lot of them up. Wouldn't it still be okay? And they go, no, no, if the root is... Rotten, so's the tree. If the roots rotten, so's the tree. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then you say, well, that's interesting because you've just described to me your organization. And they go, what? Yes. And, and then, of course, you know, I'm the kind of guy that has a briefcase that I keep in my office. So when I see the Jehovah's Witnesses out in the neighborhood, I just get my briefcase, which has these hundred-year-old Jehovah's Witness books in it. And I go out right. there with them and start walking with them and start talking with them and I ask them the same thing I just told you just now and then when they mm -hmm. go what and I say you just described your organization I then open the briefcase right. and I start handing them my 100 year old Jehovah's Witness Watchtower books and those books right. have fold out maps and charts of pyramids in Egypt yes <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's See, described, you know, and I'll, I, I can still remember a group, of, I was with like six Jehovah's Witnesses out on the street corner, uh, and they were looking at these books, and I could see their hands shaking. They were, it was, they were, <laughs> they were literally frightened by their own right. literature. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, in fact, in, in, in fact, as Mary would tell you, we call it the open mouth insert foot syndrome, which the Watchtower Society has found themselves time and time again, with, open up their mouth, their big mouth, you know, flapping their gums in the wind, put it in printed page, and then when called out on this and they see their material, then they look a little bit of a uh, little dumbfounded, so to speak, on this. For those that are joining us, yes. One, one time I, I was invited by this mother to... She had divorced her Jehovah's Witness husband, and uh, yeah. she had custody of her three children, and she wanted me to come over and talk to those three children about Jehovah's Witnesses while she had custody of them away from her ex-husband. And so I came over, and instead of trying to sit there and, you know, take here, open your mouth, and I'm going to take this Bible and shove it down your throat, I sat there, and all I had to do for a couple of hours is just show them Jehovah's Witness literature, books, Watchtower magazines, you know, where they're making all these false prophecies, changing their doctrine, uh, all, the, all the errors and mistakes that could be brought out. We could do, you know, 10 hour, 10 hour series just on that. Uh, but yeah. anyway, in two hours, I spoke to them and gave them the, the information, and those three kids were convinced by that time that the, the Watchtower could not be trusted. And within a short right. time, they actually, uh, through me giving some helpful information to the mother, we were able to successfully get them out in a child custody case. In fact, we even have this posted on the Internet, the whole testimony about it, with the mother and her three kids. It's called Trapped in the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's on the Internet, and it's yeah. on Yahoo video, Google video. You can just put my name and find it there. But she has a whole testimony of how you can use Watchtower literature just to win court cases or to save your children yeah. from 
blood transfusions at the hospital and stuff like that. Right. Because they're, they're phony doctrine. Their doctrine is evil. <laughs> so mm-hmm. There you, you go. Can, you can win court cases. You can save lives in hospitals uh, right. just with their own literature. And, and so, well, you know, when the, I've, 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 there's a couple of scriptural passages that we look at where the Bible only defends itself. And I can give you, we can read one of them from Shaul or the Apostle Paul who said this in Galatians the first chapter, the ninth verse, it says, as you have heard before, now I say it again, if anyone preaches to you a gospel contrary to what you received, a curse be upon him. And so, what? or if you read Revelation chapter 22, which is a curse, one that adds or take away, Yahweh himself could add on to him the plagues or take away his portion from the tree of life. In other words, I wouldn't want to be nothing... on those shoes of the Watchtower Translation Committee. They I know. Right <laughs> <That's... now. laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Uh, for those that are just joining us, we are talking to Larry Wessels from uh, Austin, Texas. He is the director of Christian Answers. Also, he hosts his own program in Austin, Texas, through cable television, uh, ca- public t- cable access as well as have a number of presentations on Yahoo, as well as YouTube, and we're grateful to have them join us. We're talking about the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, the Bible that Mary Aguilaris would sit there and say, she needs a birth bag, or she needs, she got a headache, or <laughs> stuff like that. And I agree, and in many regards, yeah, I agree with her on that. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to take some scriptural passages from the New World Translation and to see where, what the Watchtower Society have done. And starting off with one text that we know all too well is found in the book of Genesis. You know, those ten words, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Well, look at verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1. It would say, now the earth was proved to be formless, and I'm reading it from the New World Translation. Um, now the earth proved to be formless and waste, and there was darkness upon the surface of the watery deep. And God's active force was moving to and fro over the surface of the earth. Hold on for just a minute, because I'm going to get Genesis chapter 1 from the the Bible that I'm using, where it says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depth. And the Ruach, Yahweh, was hovering over the surface of the waters. This says God's active force, but my scripture says this is the Ruach, Yahweh, or the Spirit of God. So what is it that, you know, what is it that's so deceptive about what we read from the New World Translation. Well, what what you find here is, as we've already described in an earlier part of this radio show, what we have here is the Jehovah's Witnesses, in their translation of the Bible, uh, like I said before, it's it's, it's an intentional deception, like so much of what they do to to deceive people. That's one, one name I have for Jehovah's Witnesses, deceived Deceivers, you know, they're going around deceiving people because they're deceived themselves, and then they're trying to yes. accomplish the same deception. Well, these, this New World Translation is just part of the overall deception of the people at at the headquarters of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Those guys knew what they were doing when they came out with this translation. They knew they were deceiving people, and they were intentionally trying to deceive. Uh, and that's the unfortunate part about it, because a lot of the Jehovah's Witnesses that come to your door and walk into the neighborhood, they are sincere people, but they are sincerely yeah. deceived. Just because somebody thinks they can walk off a cliff without falling, and they're sincere about it, doesn't mean in reality that they're going to be able to walk off that cliff and just walk across the air. No, reality steps in and causes them to fall to their death. Well, here's what happens with the New World Translation. These guys that put this together are are intentionally, wherever there's major Bible doctrine that they do not agree with, they intentionally change that doctrine throughout their 
translation. So since right. they don't believe in the biblical doctrine of the Trinity, for instance, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as we have in Matthew chapter 28, 19, uh, in many other places, John 14, so forth. But uh, anyway, so here you have uh, active force being inserted into the text, uh, just as I mentioned before, we've got that uh, Examining New World Translation show on, on the Internet. Uh, we go through a host of scriptures, how they simply change uh, what the actual Greek, in this case you're talking about the Hebrew because it's Old Testament and Genesis, uh, they just change what the text says and insert it straight into the text as if it were part of the, uh, the text. A uh, classic example, just to tie back into what you're asking here, uh, if you were to go to Colossians chapter uh, 1, verse 15 and following, in, in their original, which I have right here, the 1950 a New World uh, Translation of the uh, Scriptures, the, the Christian Greek script, Scriptures, that they translated, and he uh, is before all things, and he created right. all things. Uh, talk about Jesus being the creator, and he created everything. Well, they stuck in the word other in that passage, uh, with no brackets in the original. Right. They said he is before all other things. <laughs> and he created right. all other things. And so they didn't want to admit that Jesus is God, and he's the creator, and all things were made by him and for him. So they stuck the word other right in the text without it being any justification whatsoever for it. It wasn't until years later they in their later editions of the New World Translation, in Colossians 1, for instance, uh, that they stuck brackets around the word other. They still refuse to take the word other out of the text uh, because they're trying to make him to be what they believe he is, which is the archangel Michael, a created being. Uh, right. They, they already believe that the man Jesus that no longer exists. He ceased to exist and his body turned into gases. So the, the Jesus <laughs> they have now is just a recreation as God remembers him after he recreated him as Michael the Archangel again. So the man Jesus is forever dead, according to their doctrine. So they, he doesn't right. even exist anymore. Uh, but right. they're, they're trying to tie those kind of weird doctrines into their translation. So here in Genesis, you've got a situation where they don't believe the Holy Spirit is God, third person of the Trinity. They believe mm -hmm. he's an impersonal force like electricity that runs through your power lines. He's, he's just something that, uh, that uh, is, is, is a non-personal ego that is a, a, a power that's used by Jehovah God. In fact, right. I mentioned before, the second president of the Jehovah's Witnesses, Judge Rutherford, in his book Angels, which I have just sitting over here, he also said that this power beam, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit, like in, you know, it's funny how uh, whenever the devil comes up with these different religions, he's always attacking the deity of Christ, attacking the deity of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but it, Judge Rutherford in his book, Angel, said that uh, since the Holy Spirit is just a power, it takes the Holy Spirit ten days, just like the angels, to get to the earth from that planet he's on in the star system Pleiades, where Jehovah lives, on uh, Alclone, <laughs> the planet Alclone. Uh, so you've got to remember that they're looking at the Holy Spirit as just an impersonal force and not an mm -hmm. actual deity, third person of the Trinity. Uh, so what they have to do in a passage like you brought up is just change it. <laughs> just yes. Make it into an actual an... force to tie into their preconceived idea that he's just a power beam, he's just an electrical force, and not God himself. Right. That's true. Here's something else that I, I don't know if Mary realized this or not, when she had a copy of the New World Translation, and I looked at this, and it's found in Numbers chapter 1 and in verse 52. I'm going to read it once again from the Bible that I'm using, uh, which is the, Jew the Jewish Bible, and then I'm going to read it from the New World Translation, where it says, The Israelis are camped by their military divisions, each man under his encampment, and under his banner. Now, I read it from the New World Translation. It says, And the sons of Israel must camp each, with reference to his camp, and each man by his three-tribe division 
by their armies. But hold on for just a minute. They taken out a certain word, which was the term banner. If it was in the Hebrew, uh, it would be used the word banner, but in the King James, it says flag. So the question I'm asking you is, what? Why does this sound so different compared to what I've read from the Jewish Bible compared to what you would read in the King James Version? Well, it's, it's, once again, we, 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 you know, as I've, I've said throughout, and you already know yourself, they are putting out a translation that is not an honest translation. They are forcing their doctrine into the Word of God, trying to make it appear that it teaches what they teach, which it does not. And uh, as you know, having been a Jehovah's Witness, uh, they do not like uh, honoring flags. In fact, they don't even like to use postage stamps that have the flag on it, the American flag, let's say. <laughs> yes. They, they, it, 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 they, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll go to any extent to change whatever they don't believe in already. Uh, you know, when it comes to, like, military service and stuff like that, you know about the conscientious objectors to the military and things of that nature. Yes. Uh, it just kind of reminds me of all that. And and so that's why you can't trust anything they're putting in their Bible because they don't do what they even said in their own forward that we already quoted from the first hour of the show. And what's funny, too, about this organization, not only their translation, but their organization in general, uh, we're talking about military here, for instance, from this passage and things, Mm -hmm. that their own founder, Charles Taze Russell, who started all this back in the 1870s, and then he incorporated uh, this Zion's Watchtower in, eight, in uh, 1884. So we're talking about a religion, religious system that hasn't even been around that long in the, in the, in the scope of history. Uh, but he believed you could be in the military, you could, military service was acceptable <laughs> back then. The founder right. of Jehovah's Witnesses believed it was acceptable to to do military service. Now, of course, they've totally changed their doctrine because Judge Rutherford, uh, who actually uh, lost a lawsuit on this deal, uh, didn't believe in it. So he changed that doctrine from the founder uh, to, against military service. The founder, for instance, of Jehovah's Witnesses, Charles Taz Russell, believed in, in celebrating Christmas. Now, you remember, uh, Derek, when you were Jehovah's Witnesses, did you ever celebrate Christmas or Easter? I, no, I, don't, I do not recall those moments, but... <laughs> right, and, and see, they, they can't stand those, those holidays and so forth, but the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses did believe in it. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, and then you, you go and in all fact, they were celebrating it up to, was it, 1925, 24, well, yeah, 25? See, the next guy in line started changing everything. That's the first guy that started this religion. That's, that's right. That. So... You, you have some of the stuff that Rutherford, particularly a lot of Bible doctrines and things, but then again, he changed a lot of that too. So what you have here is an organization that basically has its beliefs built on uh, the, the founder, and then the next guy changes a lot of that stuff up. And then as you got new leaders of this, this cult group, they can institute new things too and then claim it's from God because, after all, they're the faithful and wise servant. Uh, meet, you know, right. out meet in due season. So yes. that's the, the the problem we have with that. Now, uh, Derek, yeah. does this show run out in about fifteen minutes or so, or twenty minutes? This is going right now. We still have about twenty six minutes left. Well, okay. really twenty three minutes left, but we still have a little bit much time to okay, build. Because what I wanted to do with some of this time we have left is kind of go into the New Testament a little bit on what they've done with some of their, uh, and I can in a rapid fire way. Uh, Show our, our our listeners uh, some of the some of the distortions of things in biblical texts that they have done, particularly throughout the uh, New Testament when it comes to uh, key Bible doctrine. Because really, that's what sure. this book's all about. It's just this New World Translation is simply a marketing tool that the Jehovah's Witnesses use to deceive people into staying with their group, believing in what they're teaching and thinking that they're the prophet of God on the face of the earth today. But when you start analyzing what they've done with the New Testament, for instance, uh, from their kingdom in a linear, this, uh, which is, you know, I've got one of their original 1969 editions I'm holding in my hand right now, along with their 1950. Uh, right. What you find is they never should have published 
They're a kingdom interlinear translation. Whenever I'm with Jehovah's Witnesses, I always have this kingdom interlinear translation because their own interlinear Greek dis- uh, disagrees with their own translation and the New World translation. <laughs> right. It's sort of like I said, Greek the ish- words. Right. And then they, they put it next ish- to the New World translation. Their own translation of the interlinear disagrees with their with their English translation. So you can That's use right. one of their books yes, against it the other. It's incredible. But now, yeah. uh, what I wanted to show people is that when you look into passages of Scripture, such as uh, uh, Philippians chapter okay. 2, uh, do you, you, you happen to, you know where it says that uh, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, tongue will confess. that yes. Jesus is Lord to the glory yes. of God the Father. Philippians chapter 2. Verses uh, uh, nine through eleven, I believe. Yes, uh, you're familiar with that passage, right? And, yes, uh, it that, takes you directly uh, to the book of Isaiah, chapter forty-five. What was yes, that? And, it would take us directly to the Old Old Isaiah, right? Uh, chapter uh, forty. Chapter forty-five, verse, verse 23. twenty-three. Right, yes. and as you know from Isaiah forty-five twenty-three, knowing that passage. What is it talking about there? It's talking about to God. To, right. as Jehovah's Witness was translated, Jehovah. <laughs> yes. Every knee bow, every tongue confess that Yahweh is God. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's what's being talked about in Isaiah, the Old Testament. Well, what's happening here in Philippians chapter 2 is that Paul is applying that text from Isaiah to the Lord Jesus Christ and saying that to every knee and every time we'll confess that he is Jehovah, is God, is Lord. But what did the Jehovah's Witnesses do in this passage, in the New World Translation? They simply translate it using the word kurios, which is the Greek for Lord. And they say that when you have that word kurios, and it's actually taking coming from an Old Testament text, uh, you know, in the King James, I'll usually capitalize it because it's coming from the Tetragrammaton, the YHWH, and that's yes. and that's why they justify in their their New World Translation. You can use the word Jehovah. So wherever the New Testament uses the word Kyrios for Lord, but it's actually quoting from an Old Testament passage, you can then use the word Jehovah instead. That's that's even in the forward of their New World Translation on why they do it. That's right. Okay, so. Right. Here we have a classic example in Philippians chapter 2 where here's a passage taken right out of the Old Testament using the word curios, which means that every knee confess, every, every knee bow, and every uh, tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Jehovah. It should be according to their rule if they followed it. But right. in their translation, they don't do that. They just say, right. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And what's interesting about that is uh, that they don't follow their very own rule there when they should have put Jesus as Jehovah <laughs> to the glory of yeah. God the Father. And then when you look in their New World Translation in relation to this to Romans chapter 14, verse 11, and uh, I just happen to have it right here in front of me right now, and I'll read you that verse. Uh, it says, for it is written, as I live, says Jehovah, to me every knee will bow and every tongue will make open acknowledgement to God. Now that's from Romans okay. chapter 11, uh, 14, verse 11, from the New World Translation. This is once again mm-hmm. another direct quote from Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23. Correct? Right. But what did they do here? They translate that word curios, Jehovah. But they don't do it in Philippians chapter 2 when it's the same reference from the Old Testament. They leave it as Lord. Because <laughs> right. they don't want people to see that Jesus is Jehovah. <laughs> right. It's, there you go. It's just That's... deliberate deception. <laughs> And it, 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 it does. It is very much deceitful. Another text that 
you may want to uh, talk about on this. Uh, we brought this is something that witnesses do not like looking at. Is found from the uh, book of John, or in Hebrew, Yochanan, chapter 2, and verses 18 through verse 22. And when we get there, I'm going to read this from the Kingdom Interlinear Bible, and since I you know, put away the New World Translation. But this is what it states here. It goes, Therefore, in answer, the Yehudim, or the Jew, said to him, What sign have you to show us since you are doing these things? And answer, Jesus, or Yeshua, said to them, Break down this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Therefore, the Yehudim said, This temple was built in 46 years, and will you raise it up in 40 days? in three days but he was talking about the temple of his body when though he was raised from the dead his disciples recalled to mind that he used to say this and they believed the scripture and the saying that Jesus or Yeshua said now here's the issue that I have at this point if this is true Yeshua said that he's going to raise his own body that he's talking about what does this say? And does this, how come they did not in any way change this text? Well, you know, it's interesting because some, it's like we pointed out in our, our television show that we did on the New World Translation, that the Bible has, when it, when it comes to essential doctrines, that there, it is interlaced into the, throughout the Word of God in such layers that even if you're trying to intentionally edit it out of there, it, there's so many references to it, you can't get rid of them all. It kind of reminds me of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, where uh, the scripture says in the original, in a, the original uh, New World Translation, it's where God the Father is telling all the angels in heaven, let all the angels of God worship him. Worship who? Worship Jesus. Well, in the original translation of the New World Translation, they left that in there. Let all the angels of God worship, W-O-R-S-H-I-P, worship Jesus. Well, of course, now right. since then they've changed it once they realize their mistake. <laughs> you know, you're only to worship God, no one else. But they right. even left that translation in their original New World Translation. And so many people called oh. on it. They changed right. the word. Right, here's the... Right, but the problem is, they said witnesses believe that Yeshua is Michael the Archangel, and yet we see him saying, "Look, I'm going to raise my own body up in three days." Or we read in just the Book of Colossians that it was Yeshua who is the origin, or the source, or the preeminence of all creation, um, or right. firstborn. But the problem we got is that how is it that Yeshua is Michael the Archangel when he said what he said in John chapter 2, and then we look at Colossians again. How can you reconcile that difference with the witness theology? Well, you see, they can't... It, Things like that, they, like I said before, they do not believe that Jesus' body was raised. They believe in annihilationism, that Jesus' yes. body uh, was the, you know, annihilated. It was turned into gases, and the man Jesus no longer exists at all. He does, he, there, there is no Jesus. Uh, and then God, through a life force, which is simply an information pattern, uh, according to their doctrine, if you have your aid to Bible understanding, which I have a big copy of here, it's a big book that it defines all their terms, but uh, they don't believe that the man, Jesus, and his body, they, that it even exists anymore. So they mm -hmm. have to come up with, you know, the fittings of what they believe. They, they say that he was recreated as Jehovah God, remembered him later as a mighty spirit creature. And then, of course, you know, they quote First Corinthians chapter 15 and all that kind of stuff to try to argue 
that uh, Luke 24, for instance, where Jesus is uh, raised from the dead and he's having he's eating fish with the disciples, and doubting Thomas comes in there, and in, in John chapter 20, verse 28, he says, "My Lord and my God." After he felt the the the, the nail prints in his hands and his feet, uh, he felt a physical body. But then, of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses say, "Oh, that was just a manufactured body. It wasn't really." there but what they're forgetting right. about is the scripture itself teaches the bodily resurrection of of, of, of god you know but of, of, of jesus basically in acts three twenty six and first thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10 you're told that god the father is going to raise jesus's body jesus in the reference you gave there in john chapter 2 verses 19 and 21 and also in john chapter 10 verse 18 jesus says he's going to raise his body and of course the holy spirit raises his body according to paul in romans chapter 8 verse 11 and also peter says it the same thing in first peter three eighteen. there's just too much there for the jehovah's witnesses to deal with <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah and, uh, and that's, that's uh, basically uh, we... why i'm arguing that they can't get out of every doctrine they try to change things they they pervert words they stick words into the text they take words out of the text i could show you bible verses where they actually take words out of the text so you miss the meaning. <laughs> right. And then they'll insert other words, like I already mentioned, Colossians chapter 1, uh, where they add the word other. And then yes. they, they, they put in union with, because they don't believe a person is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. They don't believe you, there's an indwelling of the Spirit in believers. So every time right. there's a word like, a word, the Greek says, you're in Christ, they change it to, in union, in with, union Christ. with Christ, it's sticking right. word union in there that doesn't belong there from the Greek, because they want right. to take it into this other doctrine that they already believe. Right. Let's do one more, and we're gonna let's go. And once again, what we'd like for you to do, what uh, is that? Ask you to give out contact information at towards the end. Um, and also, I like for Mary to share additional information regarding her show called Victim Speak Out. But let's do one more. And that's found in Yochanan, or the book of John, chapter 17, verse 3. Once again, I'm going to quote this from the, my, my Jewish, the Jewish Bible I'm using, and then I'm going to read this from the New World Translation. And it's found in Yochanan, or John, chapter 17, where it says the following. And this is what a verse? scripture that, verse 3 of John chapter 17, where it says, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only Elohim, and the one you have sent, Yeshua, the Messiah. Now, the New World Translation will read, This means everlasting life. They're taking in knowledge of you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent forth, Jesus Christ. Um, question. This, where is the discrepancy found in this text? Well, obviously, uh, taking in knowledge. <laughs> taking in knowledge. Uh, this, again, ties into the, you know, their pernicious doctrines that they already believe uh, they, they, they come to the Word of God with preconceived ideas, and they want to change the Word of God to match what their preconceived ideas are. And so, since they deny, according to their doctrine, that the Holy Spirit is God, or is a person that indwells the believer, like you would get in numerous passages throughout the Scripture, uh, they, they think He's just an electrical beam, and you you uh, basically just have to have the right knowledge to understand what you need to do in order to be saved. In other words, what makes Christianity, true Christianity, different than all the other false religions in the world is, it goes back to Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10, uh, you're saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, They are teaching a works righteousness salvation, that you have to take in knowledge, you have to understand through God's organization on the earth, the Watchtower Bible Tract Society, what you need to do in order to be saved from the Armageddon and destruction. Uh, you need to take in all this knowledge and then perform your duties. 
so you can, uh, you know, make it in the end. Uh, it's a works salvation, uh, taking in knowledge. It's not a personal relationship to a indwelt Holy Spirit that's in your life, giving you a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, right. just this text alone here just shows why they can't accept what the Bible just says plainly. They have to change it because it. They're, they want people to take in knowledge from their Watchtower magazines, their Awake magazines, and their other teachings. That's right. Well, with, with, since we don't have much time left, I'd like for, uh, for you to share some information, how to reach you, how to get to uh, watch your show if they are in Texas, or how about online? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, a, a, a real easy way to find all our stuff is just to know how to spell my name. <laughs> if you're on the Internet. Uh, the Internet, you can even do just a regular web search. And then I think I did a Google search on my name a few weeks back, and I came up. You could find stuff by me on my television shows uh, going over like 40 pages. Uh, but yes. my name is spelled Larry, L-A-R-R-Y, and my last name is spelled W-E-S-S-E-L-S. -S -S -E and uh, you can either do a web search to start seeing my shows and, and videos, uh, but of course that'll be, be mixed in with other guys named Larry Wessels. But you'll you'll find my stuff, no doubt. Or <laughs> you can go to Yahoo Video or Google Video and do the same thing. Or YouTube, YouTube as well. Just get on their homepage, go to their search box, and put my name L A R R Y Larry Wessels W E S S E L S, and all the videos will come up. I think we have currently, if you go across all the different Internet sites, we're close to 300 videos right now. But we still have about 300 more to go. And, but, uh, that and I good. have enjoyed, yes, and I have enjoyed a lot of that. Uh, and also what I am going to do, I will also post the information towards the end of, uh, at, on our blog, on our blog, on blogtalkradio.com forward slash inside in the word. Larry, Thanks so much for taking an opportunity to come off, you know, out of your schedule to join us tonight oh, on Inside sure, of the Word. It's great to be with you and Mary to yes. be able to get this information out to the folks out there and and just a uh, witness for Christ, you know, because uh, we're dealing with a lot of false prophets. Jesus himself mentioned this in Matthew 24, and uh, and so thank you for the opportunity. I really enjoyed it. Yes. No problem. Thanks, Larry. If we, yes, no problem. And for you and yours. Thanks so much for taking this opportunity to join us. Next week on Inside of the Word, Derek Witt's going to open up the email bag. And there's a lot to read this week, next week. Also, your telephone calls as well as the chat room as well. So we look forward to you and yours to take part in this. Until next time, I'm Derek Witt, and I will see you in just a bit. Thanks so much. Thank you. Check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. Historycart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. Muslimhope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. 